There's one thing that every person has in common. Death. Death can come any number of ways, but what happens then? If you're brave enough to learn exactly what happens to the body during the end of life, then here's what it's like to die. When a person starts dying, their circulation reduces so it can focus primarily on the body's internal organs. This process reduces blood flow to the hands, legs, and feet, which is why a person nearing the end of their life often feels cold to the touch or might complain of feeling cold themselves. I feel... cold. This change in blood flow can also cause the dying person's skin to appear yellow or waxen. Some will also develop what's referred to as mottling, which is a purple or pink pattern forming on the skin. There's nothing that can be done to stop these changes to the body, but attempts to make the person more comfortable can be made by adjusting the room's temperature or providing extra blankets. Doctor! <laughs> I'm so cold! We need more blankets! We need more blankets! When approaching death, a person's brain starts to shut down in certain areas to focus on only the most necessary functions, much in the same way the rest of the body does. David Hovda, director of the UCLA Brain Injury Research Center, told The Atlantic, as the brain begins to change and start to die, different parts become excited, and one of the parts that becomes excited is the visual system, so that's where people begin to see light. Jim Borjudgen, a neuroscientist at the University of Michigan, told The Atlantic that the sudden release of neurochemicals in the brain that is beginning to shut down can cause a person to have what she referred to as amazing experiences. House, you okay? We've been waiting for you. I'm hallucinating. Chaplain Ann O'Shea from Crossroads Hospice and Palliative Care says she's been with many patients who have claimed to see loved ones who weren't actually there. Crossroads nurse Carolyn Kwok Huin adds that patients will also have dreams of loved ones during their end days or smell a familiar smell such as cigars or a certain perfume. A natural death can seem like it's dragging out forever because there's a lot of dying that takes place before a person is actually dead. In 2016, author Jenny Deere wrote in The Atlantic about her experience caring for her mother during the final stages of breast cancer. Deere was there in her family home when the hospice nurse on duty asked her mom if she wanted to know what will happen to her body when it started to shut down. What they learned is that until about 100 years ago, most deaths happened quickly because there were no medical measures set in place to properly care for patients. Due to modern advancements in medicine, death can be prolonged for quite some time. James Hallenbeck, a palliative care specialist at Stanford University, wrote about a stage called active dying in his book Palliative Care Perspectives. Active dying is described as a final rapid slide that happens in roughly the last few days of life. Hallenbeck wrote, first hunger and then thirst are lost. Speech is lost next, followed by vision. The last senses to go are usually hearing and touch. In standard medical terms, there are two ways that a person's death is determined. The book Nursing Made Incredibly Easy explains that the most commonly accepted form of death is cardiac death when the heart stops working. The second, less common, is brain death. Once a person becomes brain dead, the heart can continue pumping when hooked up to medical equipment, but would not be able to do so on its own. Before the invention of ventilators and medications that help keep the body's functions active, there was no need to factor in such a thing as brain death. In earlier medical days, it was common for patients with no brain function to quickly succumb to cardiac arrest. This presents an often difficult situation both for family members as well as medical professionals who have to make the call whether to keep a person who's been diagnosed as brain dead on a ventilator or to pull the support and let their heart follow the brain to death. When death is no longer a single specific moment in time, everything gets complicated. As if the process of dying isn't grim enough, there is scientific evidence that points to the fact that a person's brain can sometimes remain active after they pass away, long enough even to hear their own time of death announced. Now call it. Time of death, 11.55. Dr. Sam Parnia, Director of Critical Care and Resuscitation Research at NYU Langen School of Medicine in New York City, gathered together a team to study a selection of people who briefly died after suffering cardiac arrest but were revived. In a 2017 Independent article, it's explained that some of the patients he and his team studied claimed to have heard full conversations 
and even viewed the room they were in after their death had been called by medical professionals. When their claims were presented to the medical teams present at the time, the details of what they experienced were verified. Blink if you can hear me. I hear you. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Death is most commonly called at the point of one's heart stopping, which is referred to as cardiac death. But even after the heart stops, there is often a surge of brain activity that could cause a person to experience brief moments of near clarity. So that's something super creepy to look forward to. A Massachusetts doctor named Duncan McDougall published a study in 1907 on the results of experiments he'd conducted to determine if the human soul has weight. During these experiments, he noted each patient's time of death, their time spent on their deathbed, and changes in weight caused by the loss of body fluids and gases. For each and every patient, there were 21 grams left unaccounted for, which he concluded to be the weight of the soul. Just doesn't it seem like something's missing? What about the soul? Although this was a theory that dates all the way back to the beginning of the 20th century, it's one that is widely believed in varying degrees to this day. The popular debunking site Snopes took a look at the 21 grams mystery in 2005 and determined that it's half true. Yes, McDougall did perform these tests, but his methods were flawed and demonstrated nothing credible that could be tied directly to the weight loss having anything to do with the soul, which many people don't believe exists in the first place. The soul. There's nothing but chemistry here. Following McDougall's experiment, physician Augustus P. Clark countered that a rise in body temperature at death, caused by the lungs no longer cooling blood, could cause a rise in sweating, which could account for the missing 21 grams. Caleb Wilde, author of the book Confessions of a Funeral Director, has firsthand experience with more corpse scenarios than most, to be sure. In his book, he reveals that if a corpse is moved while there's air trapped in its lungs, the body can make a variety of startling sounds like moans and gasps. Even worse, some of the trapped air can escape from the other end, resulting in untimely corpse farts. Not something you want to hear while preparing for a viewing or funeral service. A different kind of noise can be heard coming from a body, which takes place closer to their actual time of death. This noise, or combination of noises, is commonly referred to as a death rattle, which occurs when a body is no longer capable of swallowing and causes secretions to build up in the respiratory tract. According to Medical News Today, a death rattle might sound like a crackling, wet noise, or a moan, or even a snore, all of which can become amplified if the person is still breathing. If this noise is heard, death is often right around the corner, unless, of course, you have Miracle Max around. It just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Live fast, die young, leave a good-looking corpse. This infamous quote is attributed to Chicago writer Willard Motley, and it's entirely possible for a person to do so, just not for very long. According to Very Well Health, at the moment of death, a person's body enters a state called primary flaccidity. During this state, the part of the brain that controls muscle control shuts down, and all remaining feces and urine drain freely. You guys know what? Um, the last thing you do when you die is crap your pants. What? Gas exiting the body helps to push the waste through, which is just one of many unpleasant truths about death. And about the job of mortician, which requires workers to handle all sorts of unsavory bodily releases. It's your turn to take the bedpan out tonight! In Caleb Wilde's book, Confessions of a Funeral Director, he describes rare instances in which corpses can exhibit muscle movement well after the time of death. He recalls a time he and his family were preparing a corpse and the fingers of the dead man were moving involuntarily as though he was playing the piano. According to Medical Daily, tissues continue to live for a little bit after a person has passed away. As the tissues and muscle begin to degenerate, they contract, causing small movements. Postmortem spasms and twitches can occur for quite some time after death, and scientific reports vary as to the exact length of time. A frequently passed around piece of corpse trivia is that nails continue to grow after death, but that's not actually the case. According to the BBC, when a person's heart stops beating, the brain's oxygen supply is cut off, and without the flow of oxygen and no glucose reserve, nerve cells die off within minutes. 
If fingernails kept growing, that would mean there were new cells being produced, which simply can't happen without glucose. What gives the appearance of postmortem nail growth is the body's shrinking skin caused by dehydration. According to the article, morticians will often moisturize the fingers of a corpse while preparing it for a viewing to give the nails a more normal appearance. And if medical science isn't enough to convince you, Snopes also looked into it in 2004 and found that nope, nails don't grow after death, and neither does hair. Mere minutes after a person dies, their body begins the grisly process of putrefaction. According to The Guardian, as soon as the heart stops beating and cells are deprived of oxygen, every element of the body begins to break down and eventually rot. Enzymes start to digest cell membranes, blood cells spill out and discolor the skin, body temperature continues to drop and rigor mortis sets in. And the process doesn't stop there. There's a lot that goes into the whole ashes to ashes thing we hear so much about. Without the immune system working, bacteria found primarily in the gut begins to eat away at the intestines and surrounding tissues. Gas builds up in the body and causes blisters to form until the skin itself slips off in sheets. As things progress, the gases and liquefied tissue within the body will begin to leak out. As the enzymes, bacteria, and gases do their work, the body turns green and then purple and then black. If stored in temperatures of 50 degrees, it will take only four months until the body becomes nothing more than a skeleton. In 100 years, nothing more than dust. After taking into consideration all of the not-so-nice things a body goes through after death, cremation may start looking like a great way to burn up all the poo and green skin, but it comes with its own unique unpleasantness. The very business-sounding site, U.S. Funerals Online, details that each state has its own rules and regulations when it comes to cremation, and there's at least a 24-hour waiting period for the cremation of a new corpse to take place. Some crematories will allow loved ones to witness the cremation of their deceased, and may even allow you to push the button that starts the process. This might be satisfying for anyone looking to air their final grievances. Confessions of a funeral director reveals lesser-known facts about cremation, like how a body doesn't need to be embalmed before it's cremated, but if it has fake breasts or a pacemaker, those need to come out first. And if anyone's looking to cremate a loved one via an outside funeral pyre, they should go to Crestone, Colorado, one of the few places in America where it's legal to do so. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite cheery subjects are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.